Hello there everybody, this is Getty 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 92 coming at you today with a new episode of your daily dose of Gosh. And you know it guys, today is chicken day. Today is chicken day. You will exactly see what I mean by that in just a few seconds there. Today we will check out Leave That Thing Alone, Life in Cleveland 2011. Some years ago, but nonetheless, it's probably a great instrumental. I know I've reviewed Where's My Thing and here it is before. But this specific version, let's check it out, leave that thing alone by our favorite boy band, Rush. And in the first seconds there, you will see why it's chicken time. Check it out. You see? You see? It's chicken day. I just love that bass at the beginning there. I mean that bass, bass riffs, or those bass notes that Getty actually is playing there, these are really really hard riffs actually to play. I tried it myself actually to play Leave That Thing Alone on the bass and only that small proportion of what Getty is actually playing doing the whole instrumental there. It's just amazing, it's so weirdly played and you have to take care of each and every note like you've never taken care of any note in your life before. And that's just the greatness of Geddy Lee. That is so awesome when you have just taken a passage or a train to Bangkok before and you're listening to that specific solo there. I could recommend it to you. It's amazing. Have you just 
seen or heard that fast with that Getty was playing there. It's amazing, check it out. Amazing. Can we just take a listen once again to the bass solo of Getty there? Just just a few seconds there because that's just amazing what we've just witnessed. If you can't play bass like that, you're not a bass player. And I know that's so offending to say, and I've, I'm a bass player myself, but I truly have to say, if you're able to play like this, you can call yourself a bass player, a professional bass player. That's just amazing. I just want to check this one out again and then we will talk about that song. I could listen to this over and over and over and over again. That's just an amazing, amazing solo, first of all, by Getty, as we've just seen it once again, because it's so amazing. And if you can play like that, you deserve to call yourself a bass player. Other than that, no, we are not bass players, actually. But other than that, the guitar solo of Alex with the high notes at the end, that just freaked myself completely out in the league. And when that bass solo came all along, because sometimes when Getty is playing solos, you don't always recognize them as solos because almost every single time, whenever Getty is playing a solo on the bass, Alex is doing the same solo or kind of like solo or kind of like when he's playing a specific rhythm but he's still adding single notes that you can't always hear Getty solos very well. That happens to a lot of Getty solos actually where Alex was noodling something over and you can't always clearly hear what Getty is playing. And this is why the live versions are actually great because then you can clearly hear the instruments themselves. Not so much on the studio versions when they were playing solos there that really sounded studio-like, but whenever you get your hands or your ears on a live version of a specific song, you can hear all of those instruments as a naked version, basically, of what those instruments sounds like before they went into studio. So that's pretty cool. Whenever you get the chance, listen to a live version of a specific song. Don't always listen to the studio version. Although a few studio versions are pretty 
pretty much better than the live versions, but that's a topic for another video actually. So the composition of Leave That Thing Alone is just awesome. No chance missed. Somehow I got so so few feelings actually when I was just listening to this that Neil actually didn't play it a huge part in this song, in this instrumental version actually. He was more the most driven rhythmic instrument that you could get on the song like that because they somehow knew that bass and guitar were the most important instruments to carry that song. But the true carrier actually is again only Neil basically because Alex and Eddie they were shredding, they were playing, they were soloing, they were doing all kinds of crazy stuff. The only guy who is still there after a while, still playing his straight rhythm there, only with a few things adding to the drums, is Neil. And that's just great when you realize it that Neil actually gives Getty and Alex the room to to fulfill their fantasies of what they actually want to play on Leave That Thing Alone. So thank you Neil for, for making that possible. And basically it's a great song. I just really like this one a lot. So therefore guys there's nothing more actually to say about Leave That Thing Alone because it's just an amazing song. And I do sense in some way we only have one song left from the Counterparts record, which will be very soon Cold Fire. And then we will move on to Test for Echo. Really excited about that journey, because I used to like Test for Echo, the whole record in general, quite a bit in the last time. But somehow felt that this is not the perfect album in any way. But we will have to check each song out that we still haven't checked out so far. So therefore, thank you guys as always for joining. Let me know what do you think about Leave That Thing Alone. There can't be a single bad comment. There just can't be a single bad comment about this song. Maybe about me, but not about the song. So have a great day or great night, depending on what area you're living in on this beautiful planet called Earth. And see you soon. Bye.